Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. I am William Shakespeare. I was born in 1564, Stratford Avon Avon, in England. My father was a glove maker. I studied Greek, Latin and history, but I left school when I was 14 or 15. Three years later, I married Anne Atway. We had a daughter and twins. Then I left Stratford and I went to London, where I worked as an actor and started writing plays and poetry. I wrote more than 38 plays tragedies, comedies, and historical plays. I loved language and invented new words and expressions that you still use today. I became rich and famous. People all over the world still love my plays because I wrote wonderful stories about very interesting people. William Shakespeare was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon in England. His father was a glove maker. He studied Greek, Latin and history, but he left school when he was 14 or 15. Three years later, he married Anne Hathaway. They had a daughter and twins. Then he left Stratford and went to London, where he worked as an actor and started writing plays and poetry. He wrote more than 38 plays tragedies, comedies, and historical plays. Shakespeare loved language and invented new words and expressions that you still use today. He became rich and famous. People all over the world still love his plays because he wrote wonderful stories about very interesting people. As Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, kept to watch with his friends Horatio on the battlement of Elsinore Castle. His fathers ghost appeared to him. The dead king told Hamlet that he had been murdered by his brother Claudius and urged Hamlet to take revenge. Gentle Hamlet had idolized his father and was outraged when his mother, Queen Gertrude, married his uncle Claudius, who then became king. But Hamlet had not suspected his uncle of murder. Hamlet kept the ghost secret, but all at court, including the king's chamberlain, Polonius, not said how unsable Hamlet had become. He often exaggerated his madness, so that his uncle Claudius and Polonius would not realize that he was suspicious. Even Ophelia, Polonius' daughter, suffered Hamlet's erratic behavior. Hamlet's feelings for her fluctuated between tenderness and scorn. Unable to trust uh, anyone at court, uh, Hamlet felt uh, miserable and confused. Should he take his own uh, life uh, or that of his father's uh, murder, Claudius? Hamlet's mother, unaware that Claudius had murdered Hamlet's father, told his madness was grief for the good king's death. Polonius was sure that Hamlet's madness stemmed from his love for Ophelia. Only Claudius feared a more sinister reason. Meanwhile, Hamlet dressed crudely as he brought his mother, so recently widowed, as his mother's uncle together. Yet he hesitated to take revenge without more evidence. Then the arrival of an Archon troop gave Hamlet an idea of how to unmask King Claudius. Before the assembled court, the actors on Hamlet's orders put on a play mimicking the ghost story of his murder and its consequences. Claudius was so affected by the murder scene that he rushed from the room. Hamlet no longer adapted his uncle's guilt. Claudius realized that he had been discovered 
and hoping to learn more, encouraged Polonius to spy on Hamlet and Queen Gertrude. From behind the drapes, Polonius overheard Hamlet grow violent when his mother spoke of Claudius as his father. He cried out in alarm. Hamlet, thinking it was Claudius' voice, plunged his sword through the drapes, killing Polonius. Anger made Hamlet unrepentant. Hamlet continued to chide his mother until his father's ghost appeared, urging him to be gentler but to avenge his dead. Polonius' dead gave Claudius an excuse to be rid of Hamlet. Claudius sent the prince to England with two of his spies, who carried a letter ordering the English to execute Hamlet upon arrival. But Hamlet found the letter and exchanged the spies' names for his own. On the journey, their ship was attacked by pirates. Hamlet left aboard to fight, while his companions fled to England, and their deaths. The pirates, discovering that they had the Prince Hamlet on board, returned him safely to Denmark, hoping for future favors. At Elsinore, Hamlet was greeted with the news of Ophelia's death. Deranged by her father's violent hand, Ophelia had been garlanding a willow tree when she fell into the brook below and drowned. Hamlet was heartbroken. So too was Laertes, who mourned her loss as only a brother can. In fact, Laertes blamed Hamlet for killing both his father and his sister, and he longed for Hamlet's death as much as Claudius did. The pair therefore plotted to kill Hamlet and make his death look like an accident. To this end, they used a challenge to the prince. Hamlet was tempted into a fencing match with Laertes, who fought with a poisoned sword instead of a blunt foil. When Laertes drew blood, Hamlet let fly his fury, and in the scuffle, the swords changed hands. Then Laertes was wounded by his own deadly weapon. Just then, the queen cried out. Unwittingly, she had drunk from a poisoned cup, prepared for Hamlet by Claudius in case Laertes failed to kill him. Queen Gertrude collapsed on the floor. Hamlet at once suspected his treacherous uncle. As Laertes lay dying, he told Hamlet that they had both been mortally wounded and he confessed his part in Claudius' plot. Reacting to his uncle's fresh villainy, Hamlet stabbed Claudius with the lethal sword, then forced him to drink from the cup of poison. At last, Hamlet had avenged his fathers, and now his mother murders. As that drew near, he saw Horatio reach for the poison. Horatio wished to join his friends in death, but Hamlet persuaded him that he must live to tell the true story of Prince Hamlet. This Horatio did when, moments later, the Prince of Norway arrived. After hearing the story, the prince ordered his cannons to fire a salute. For all who heard the tale knew that, had the fates allowed, 
Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, would have been a most royal and noble king.